Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the radiation of a spherical object. Here we have an object with a certain amount of mass, a certain amount of specific heat constant, a certain amount of density, a radius r, starting at an initial temperature and presuming that it's going to radiate out into space a certain amount of energy. So we can say that the radiation dq dt is equal to e sigma a times t to the fourth power. And of course, that's a seven Boltzmann's equation. We also know that the heat contained within an object is equal to the mass times the specific heat constant times t, the temperature. Then we can write that in the differential equation and divide it by the rate of time expenditure. So then dq dt is equal to mc dt dt. Now, what we'd want to do here is find an equation that describes the temperature as a function, or I should say, the time as a function of temperature. In other words, how long will it take for that object to reach a certain temperature as it's radiating out heat? And of course, the rate at which it radiates heat depends upon the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of its surroundings. And for simplicity, we're going to take that to be equal to zero Kelvin, the surroundings. So it's going to simply be a function of its temperature. As the temperature of the object drops, the rate at which it radiates drops as well exponentially. It's kind of going to have a curve like this. And so coming up with an equation for the temperature as a function, for the time as a function of temperature, lots of t's here. Um, well, that's going to take a little bit of integration, so let's go ahead and show you how to do that. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to set these two dq dt's equal to one another because the amount of heat that the object loses equals the amount of heat that's being radiated out from the object. Also, we're going to need to put a negative sign in here because as it's radiating out heat, it's going to be a decline in the temperature. So the amount of heat radiated is going to result in a drop in the temperature here. So we can say that minus mc dt dt is going to be equal to e sigma a times t to the fourth power. Of course, that's the emissivity constant, which we'll take to be 1. That's the Stefan Boltzmann constant. This here is the area of the surface, and that's the temperature of the object raised to the fourth power. So what we need to do now is separate the variables, the t and the the t for the temperature and the t for the time. So we'll put the dt over here, we'll put this underneath here, so we can write that um, minus, let's see here, yeah, minus dt over t is equal to, bringing this across, we get e sigma a over mc and then times dt. And then it may, may make sense to take the negative sign here and place it on the other side, so we're going to do that. We'll put it right over there. And, of course, this is t to the fourth power. Now, I think I have this correct. So now we can go ahead and integrate both sides. So we'll integrate this side, we'll integrate this side. On the left side, this is t to the minus four power in the numerator, so this becomes t to the minus three, divided by the new exponent, minus three. We'll keep the constant on the other side. And that would then be equal to minus e to the sigma a over mc, and that would be times t plus a constant of integration. All right, let me put the minus 3 over here, the t down here, so we end up with 1 over t to the third power is equal to 3e sigma a over mc times t plus a constant of integration. So now we need to determine what that constant of integration is. Uh, it look like a little better. All right, we do that by saying that t is equal to t sub naught when the time is equal to zero. So if we plug in zero for time, then t would become t sub naught, and so we can say that 1 over t cubed sub naught is going to be equal to the constant of integration because this will go to zero. And that means that our equation now becomes 1 over t cubed is equal to 3e sigma a over mc times t plus 1 over t sub naught cubed. And of course, we need to uh, separate the variable, so we're going to take this and bring it to the other side. We're going to solve this for t eventually, so we're going to turn the equation around. So we have 3e sigma a over mc times t is equal to 
this, which is 1 over t cubed minus, when we bring this over the other side, that would be minus 1 over t initial cubed. Now we're going to isolate the t, so t as a function of the temperature is equal to mc divided by 3e sigma a, and then over here what we can do is write this over a common denominator, so this becomes t initial cubed minus t cubed divided by the product of t cubed times t initial cubed. And here we have our equation that tells us what the time will be to reach a certain temperature. Of course, we need all these constants. We need the mass, the specific heat constant, the emissivity constant, the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, and the surface area of the object. And of course, the temperature here, T, will be whatever temperature we want it to be to see how long it takes for us to reach that as it's radiating out heat and the object is cooling down. So that's the equation, the general equation for a spherical object as it radiates heat into space, assuming that the surroundings is at zero Kelvin. And that's how it's done.